All right, this mini vlog is Elvis's I Can't Help Falling In Love With You. I'm gonna figure out the chord progression and some of the theory in the song so I can do a song inside about it. So let's check it out. The first step is to look up the chord progression and I'm just gonna Google search Elvis I Can't Help Falling In Love With You, which is often a phrase that runs through my mind anyway. <laughs> and then I'm gonna find out a little more about the song itself using our friend Wikipedia for some factoids. All right, I'm gonna be honest, actually, so this song was made famous by Elvis. Um, I've heard other versions that, I know this is sacrilege, but sound better, honestly, in my opinion. UB40 did a version in 1993. Um, I just found a version by Teller Joseph of 21 Pilots that honestly, I think, sounds better, but because Elvis's version was kind of the, or the original one that got known, we're gonna do that version. All right, so the hit always is Ultimate Guitar. And this one, I've never seen one like this. It has 20,000 votes. Actually, almost 21,000 votes. Normally, it's like 513 might be kind of high for most songs, but it's Elvis, and so it has 20,000 votes. And this song, it says, is in the key of C, but you fret the second fret. You put a capo on the second fret. Um, so right away that's telling us it's actually the key of D. So that's one of the things about Ultimate Guitar that actually drives me insane every single time, is that it's not insightful about how the song was written. So let's try to understand what we're looking at here to make a little more sense of it. Okay, so you know what? To really find out the key, I'm going to find the song on YouTube. And we're gonna see what the key really is in. It resolves to D, so it's in the key of D. So that's how we're going to transcribe the song is in the key of D. They're saying capo the second fret, but play in the C position chords. That's just to cater to the fingering, but the nice thing about it is we can transpose the song to make it in the key of D, so we can just play the D chords, because that's what the song's written in. And since we're gonna play this song on both guitar and piano, let's just do that. Let's just transcribe it to the key of D. We're gonna forget about capoing it because it is in the key of D. So let's see if these chords are correct. Um, I think 21,000 people are probably right that this is a good transcription, but let's just make sure. Let's just confirm. <laughs> so we've got... Oh, it's a little bit different than I was thinking. Okay, so it starts out with the... Ah. So, so far, I think there is a better chord. When I first was kind of playing this, just trying to pick out the chords, I played, um, so I thought it was, uh, 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 I thought it was the one, five, one, but it's actually the one, two, three, mm, because the, um, the minor two is the relative minor of five. So that's why that sounds nice. And then the B minor, the minor three is the relative minor of one. So that's why it sounds nice. They're both kind of substitutions for those two chords. Um, F sharp minor is the three. F sharp minor is the three, thank you. I've got my fact checker right here. And um, I don't like cameras. No, I do like cameras. He's almost always right. Um, almost always right. There's a big old asterisk right there. Um, <laughs> they have this asterisk. Next to it, but I can't help falling with that G. I want to see if someone, if that asterisk is supposed to be E minor, because that's the relative minor of G. And let's see if there's any. It has been suggested that D minor might be a good substitute for F. That was just hard coded in. So if we, yeah, 
if we transcribe it, it was supposed to be in the key of C, which is the minor. So it is. It's it is E minor. It's not F. It's been suggested. It's been suggested by Elvis that that was the E minor. So uh, that's that's the chord we're going to play. I say Elvis suggested it, but part of the reason that I like other versions more. Maybe I shouldn't say this because Elvis is like holy to people, but I just think. I don't even know much about UB40, and I'm guessing there's more depth to that band than there was to Elvis. Um, and I don't know. He, he didn't write his songs. I'm, I'm looking up Wikipedia. This was written by Hugo Peretti, Luigi Creator, and George David Weiss. So they originally wrote the song. I actually think this is one of the best melodies ever. Even those guys didn't write the melody. It was based on uh, Placer d'Amour, a popular French love song composed in 1784 by Jean-Paul Iguide Martini. So, honestly, this melody is amazing because it just flows so well through the chords. So the chords are awesome. I think the melody makes use of these chords better than a lot of other melodies could. Um, so, yeah, this is this is an awesome song. It was, it's been covered by a bunch of people. Elvis is the most uh, popular. So let's keep looking at the next section, which is the chorus. <laughs> That's nice. So the chorus is so. So we could play the C sharp major, but if we do the C sharp and that adds a little bit of full labor to it. So the verse, so the verse just continues. Second verse is the same as the first. Chorus is the same as the first chorus. Verse three is the same. All right, um, let's figure it out on the piano now. Um, I like defaulting to the um, the root position just because it it emphasizes the chord that's kind of meant to be played. So it's That's nice. <laughs> of the song part of it is that it's in 3-4 time. There's something about the waltz that just just sounds so sweet. And then you have this chord progression on top of that, and then the melody on top of that, It's and then Elvis's sweet, sweet voice on top of that. Doesn't get any better.
finally resolve to D. It's like the best buildup to D ever. This D major is sitting on top of a pile of harmonic greatness. The next step is to figure out, so, okay, so I can say that the 21,000 people were right, so we're going to look at the um, almost right, because I think the suggested E minor chord is not just suggested, it's basically necessary. Um, so now we're going to look at the chords and figure out which mode this is in. All right, so there's quite a few chords going on here, and it resolves to D, so we know D is the is the tonic here. So we're going to write out the different chords and we're going to say D is the tonic and then A is the 5 and B minor is the minor 6 uh, F sharp minor is that chord G is the 4 C sharp, seven. And then we have B seven, so we've got a B. And E minor, definitely an E minor there. Um, all right, so these are the chords. And so we're gonna figure out which mode we're talking about. I already kinda know, but let's see if we're right here. So. D major is a major one, so it could be Ionian, Lydian, or Mixolydian. E minor is a minor two, so it's Ionian, Dorian, or Mixolydian. So, so far it could be Ionian or Mixolydian between those two. F sharp minor is a minor three, so that's Ionian, Lydian, or Lydian. We already ruled out Lydian, so we're already on the track to say that it's Ionian. So we have a major one, minor two. F sharp minor is a minor three. G is a major four, which is in the Ionian. A is a major five, which is Ionian. B minor is a minor six, which is an Ionian. And then we've got a couple of other chords that aren't in that. We've got a C sharp, let's just call it a C sharp. So a uh, major seven, which is not actually in any of the modes. That's uh, a major seven. And then we've got a major five, or sorry, a major six, which actually isn't in any of these either. It's from the, uh, I, I know for sure that the major six is from the harmonic minor. So I'm gonna pause here for a sec and see if this is in the harmonic minor. I don't think it is. All right, so I just confirmed that the harmonic minor does not have a major seven. The harmonic minor mode which is just a permutation of the Aeolian mode. It actually has a diminished seven. So this major seven is just kind of used to lead really well back to the D, but it's just it's just a, a chord that's borrowed from none of these modes. And then the major six chord um, co does come from, you know what, I'm wrong. The major six chord doesn't come from the harmonic minor. It's just another chord that sounds good. All right, so this is how this chord progression is looking. It sounds really good that that B major, the major six kind of threw me for a loop. Um, it's really interesting. Um, the B major is actually the dominant of E minor, which is the dominant of the dominant which is the dominant to the tonic. And so there's kind of some circle of fifths motion going on between the B, E, A to D. So B, E, A to D. So that, that chord progression to get out of the chorus back to the tonic in the verse is some circle of fifths motion. And that's why it sounds so good. I have diagrammed out in harmonic space the chord movement, because it's one thing to learn the chords, you know, and this shows a bunch of chords actually <laughs> in here because they're saying, hey, if you want to play in a different key, you can play these, and so they had diagrams, but really these chords don't matter um, that I'm blocking out. But the chords that are shown here, how do they relate to each other? And that is using harmonic space, and so this is basically a loop of the key, the Ionian mode, 
in uh, intervals of tertian intervals. So uh, you've got D to the minor third is the next tertian interval. The next tertian interval up from that is the 5A. Next tertian interval up is the C sharp minor diminished chord and so on. So it's this loop. So the intro flows through these chords. So the intro is pretty simple because it's just this harmonic movement between really just three chords. But then when you go into the verse, part of the reason this, this song sounds so amazing is because there's a lot of harmonic flow, which you can see here. So it's one thing to hear it, it's another thing to see it and see how these chords flow through harmonic space. So there's some kind of retrograde action going on here in that you know it flows from D to F sharp minor to B minor to G to D to A and then it goes back. It goes back to G and then A and then B minor to G to D to A. So it like goes this way and then it goes that way and that's part of the why it sounds so cool is because it's like going back and forth. Then, then in the chorus sections there's some interesting movement where we this is where we incorporate the chords that are not within the Ionian mode so we've got these borrowed chords the major seven and also the major six and so the major seven is incorporated because it's the fifth of the minor three so there's some nice uh, circle of fifths motion going on there and then it goes through the circle of fifths motion of B E and A ultimately resolving to D. So the B, E, A, D is circle of fifths increments. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna do a song insight on this, uh, but that is really how the song is picked apart and analyzed through these steps. I'll see you in the next one.